Now, have you ever asked Alexa to set your alarm clock or keep you up to date on the traffic for your morning commute? Or maybe you've asked Siri, what's your calendar for the day? It's like having your own personal assistant that you can just like talk into outer space to and they tell you things from your phone. Thanks to the rapidly evolving technology that is artificial intelligence. This quickly evolving industry is projected to pump nearly $16 trillion into the global economy by 2030. Whether or not you realize it, Artificial intelligence has already seeped into most, if not all, aspects of our lives, from facial recognition to um, smartphones that are used to, like, unlock because of your face. It's how we shop, operate driverless cars, et cetera, et cetera. Even analyzing all of our healthcare data has now turned into an AI function. The technology has an uncanny ability to reduce human era, so they say. And for all the transformational power that AI holds, it can, though, inflict greater harm on marginalized communities. Algorithm bias, algorithmic bias can present itself in the form of gender bias, racial prejudice, and even age discrimination. An artificial intelligence scientist and a highly regarded leader in her field, Timnet Jibru, noticed this dangerous trend during her years working in big tech. So she decided to speak up about it while employed at Google. She no longer works for the tech giant, but since she stopped, she founded her own firm, Distributed Artificial Intelligence Research Institute. There she focuses on who's actually building the AI, who benefits from it, and who actually gets to decide what the future looks like. I am so excited to have with me tonight uh, Timnit to talk to us about how she is working to promote ethics and provincial bias. Timnit, welcome to Amplified. First, I would love it if you could just start off by sharing more about your story, because I think that it's so fascinating, and frankly, it's a little bit frightening. Tell us about the events that actually led up to you starting your own firm. Um, well, the, the end of it is that I was publicly fired um, from Google, uh, but it starts with me joining Google in um, 2018, um, to co-lead a team that's called the Ethical AI Research Team that was funded by my former co-lead, um, Margaret Mitchell. And when I joined Google, I, I didn't have, I went with my eyes open, wide open, you know, I wasn't, uh, I didn't have any illusions about what kind of company it was. Um, I knew that it was, there were a lot of harassment cases that I even heard from my friends. They, I was the first black woman to be hired as a research scientist at Google. Um, so it, right off the bat, when I went there, I, ha I started having issue after issue because I kept on seeing issues of discrimination and harassment for especially black women, um, for both black people and women. Um, so I started speaking up about that and I quickly uh, started being on the wrong side of, you know, um, some of the management, some of the HR people. And I was actually feeling like they were waiting for the right time to get rid of me. Um, and when I joined, you know, I had already written papers that showed um, issues of algorithmic bias, for instance, the fact that automated facial analysis tools like face recognition that are highly used mostly to black, black and brown communities like you were talking about in your uh, previous segment. So these t t t um, t uh, tools of surveillance, uh, it's not just you know enough that they're used to surveil our communities, but also they have much higher error rates on darker skinned women than lighter skinned Sorry, my dog. Mm. Mm. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry, good. my dog just uh, my whole um, thing because we're all <laughs> work from home now. <laughs> but um, so I showed papers. I, I wrote a paper with my colleague uh, and dear friend Joy Bowamini showing the, that these tools have much higher error rates on darker skinned women and almost no error rates on lighter skinned men, right? So there was really no. I, I wanted to say, and then I co-founded a group called Black and AI, which was, um, and is still around, and this group is um, 
basically what we aim to do is um, increase the health, well-being, and visibility of black people in the field of AI. So when I joined Google, there was really no mm. question about who I was and what I stood for. So fast forward two years later, after a difficult two years, I wrote a paper on similar paper to uh, showing the issues with um, automated facial analysis tools that um, for what's called large language models. So these large models are a type of lang language technology that are used in so many things. Like for instance, when you do a Google search, uh, they use it to rank the search queries. When you do that little autocomplete on email, when you have um, translate systems, when you're translating from one language to another. So we um, synthesize some of the issues that these uh, large language models pose especially to marginalized communities. And the mostly white, mostly male uh, VPs at Google thought that this paper should not uh, come out and that it should be retract retracted. This is a scientific paper. Um, and this was after it went through all of the internal review processes just fine. And so I requested to mm. know why this was the case. And they said they wouldn't tell me. And um, and they said, in fact, I should uh, uh, immediately resign. Sent an email to uh, an email list for women in the Google research team, talking about my frustrations and explaining about the issues that um, I saw at Google. So this is in a nutshell what happened. And then, of course, what mm. followed was even worse because they they said first of all that I resigned, which was definitely not true and can be very clearly <laughs> proven wrong. There is a process for resignation and a whole bunch of especially white men talked about their resignation process and how it was so different from mine. And secondly, they started attacking my work and this um, brought on a whole bunch of harassment campaigns. It was a dog whistle to the white supremacists in the dark web. I started getting oh death threats, um, stalkers, and I, I still have stalkers actually you know and so being uh, publicly thrust into the public eye like that um w you know that's what i brought about so that's that's in short my story uh with google oh my god Wow. So I'm just interested in it's it's kind of easy, I think, to consider the racial implications here. And when you talk about how the bias there with women with dark skin versus like clearly fair skin men. But how does AI marginalize people of color based on gender? Based on gender? Well, you know, basically anything that you think of in society with marginalized characteristics translates to AI. Right. So it's not just. For instance, um, there is an example of how Amazon uh, scrapped um, a hiring tool, an automated uh, hiring tool, because the tool was trained on historical data that um, to base, you know, on who to um, accept for the, for a particular job. Let's say in computer science, for example, and who to reject. And if you look at historical data. We live in a white supremacist patriarchal society. So women have mm -hmm. been discriminated against forever, right? And no matter how qualified you are, no matter what, you know, you're going to not get that job because of discrimination. So if you train your model to learn from history and say, hey, this w person is qualified for the job because a person like them was accepted mm -hmm. in the past. This person, on the other hand, is not qualified for the job mm -hmm. because a person like them was not accepted. Then we know what right. you're going to end up uh, deciding, right? So this right. tool just uh, started having a correlation between, for instance, women's colleges, people who went to women's colleges, um, and a low score, meaning that they shouldn't uh, get accepted to this job. So this is just, just one example, right? But there are ways. In which, this is fascinating. Um, people yeah, can be yeah. Against so based on their gender. So I have less than a minute left, but I would love for you to share with us the future of Distributed Artificial Intelligence Research Institute. So you formed Dare. What is your hope for yes. your work moving forward? My hope is that you know people from marginalized communities don't have to fight the powers that be to just have a seat at the table, work on AI that actually benefits us uh, with a research practice that's not extractive and discriminatory, and work on tools that actually benefit our communities and show the harms of existing tools to our communities. And that is simply the goal of the Distributed AI Research Institute.
Timnit Gebru, founder and executive director of Distributed Artific Artificial Intelligence Research Institute. Thank you so much for being here with us on Amplified tonight. I, I feel like I need to have you back because there are like nine different things I didn't get to ask you uh, for us to talk about, but it's fascinating and, and we appreciate hearing from you. Thank you.